Welcome back to the Retro Tech Repair Shop. We've now repaired our amplifier and our turntable and we're going to turn our attention to the Goodman's Q70 speakers. These are working, we're using them on our little test rig. We have got some crackling with these potentiometers. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to bench 5, we're going to take them apart and find out what's inside. Right, these are our Goodman's Q70 speakers. What information is written on the back of them? Um, Three-way system frequency range 35 to um, 20 kilohertz, or is that 200 kilohertz? Can't tell. It says 35 to 20,000 hertz, uh, 20 kilohertz. Basically, human hearing range. Yeah. RMS power handling 70 watts, music power handling 120 watts, crossover network 1 kilohertz, sensitivity 92 decibels, impedance 4 to 8 ohms, or is that 4.8 ohms? No, that's 428, it's a dash, it's a hyphen. Right. right, and on this you have got two controls, an MR and a HF. Medium range and high frequency, I'm guessing. Can't see any way of getting in these. Should we take one of the. They're like nailed shut or something now. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to break them open. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take the large front speaker out and see what we can see. Minecraft villager noise. Oh, the insulation. Oh, there's a little circuit board in them. Nice. Okay, so we've got this main speaker here. Big boy. And it's. I don't know what resistance that is, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And that connects down there on this circuit board, and we've got. Uh, the cables coming out here that go out to the amplifier and then we've got the capacitor across here, here and here and we've got a big coil here and here so this must be the, the tuning network so it allows certain frequencies to pass to these different speakers uh, depending on the frequency range I think that's how they work should we draw the circuit out and see what we've got connected to what? If we undo this one, then uh, it will give us a bit more access, won't it? Do you want to take that one out? I've noticed the casing here is completely sealed. So they've actually built these up and then put speakers in finally in the end. And that's it. Then the case doesn't go apart. Yeah. My hand underneath. Okay, that's another speaker. Speaker there. Another and then should we do this one as well, so we can have a look, see what's underneath that one. Two wires going up to that potentiometer and two wires going up to that. So, so we trace this through and see what we've got. So that ends up to there, goes up via that cable here to M1. Put that one there. It goes through MR, back on the black, and the black goes down to another inductor. And it goes on the black cable, which goes to the smaller speaker. Okay. So 
I redraw this. What about the other one? And that was H. Is that HF? My frequency? HF. Yeah. Okay. Goes about there. So that's it. So basically, we've got three different configurations of tuned circuits. So all the frequency range will come in, and then this circuit will tune to the low end frequencies. Medium range frequencies will be tuned by this network here of capacitor, inductor, and resistor in this network. And then the high frequencies will just be with this. Uh, capacitor and then a resistor. So that's the circuit we've got in there. Uh, I'm interested to see what these potentiometers are, you know, what values. So we should do some measurements. Yeah. There's your 2.2 microfarad capacitor there. And there. There's our coil there. Coil, ducting coil there and there. Shall we see what, what's, what's the resistance on this little one here? So if you use zero there. So put them leads together and then we'll zero it. 6.5 and 5 ohms. So let's write that down. And here, so the small one was 6.5 ohms, yeah? 7.6. 7.6. 7.5 ohms. Okay, so 7.5 ohms. Seems to be, doesn't it? Hmm. So what we've got, oh, we've got that capacitor across it. <laughs> That's why, if you look at the schematic, we've got a capacitor across it, so it's, uh, it's just a large, large speaker. speaker, yeah, so it's got a capacitor across it, which is messing up the reading. Okay, so we can't read that without taking out a circuit. You do. Well, everything, all the wiring seems okay. That one's a bit loose, isn't it? That little coil there, it's come off. It's rattling around a little bit. Okay, so that goes from zero to 4.2 ohms. Okay, the MR, so that's a very low value. Let's see if we can get a reading on this. Again, it seems to be charged on the capacitors. Get off. There's enough. There's enough voltage on the ammeter to actually on the on the multimeter to hear it. Listen. Four point one ohms. Four point one to about forty. But it's uh, again we're reading something across it. We've got a lot of other stuff in parallel with it. So is that the whole bit? The whole network, yeah. We're gonna need a box spanner for that. And, uh, Okay, so we've learnt the servicing on these are, it's all from here. Okay. Okay, yes. put the nut on the one, that hasn't got the nut with it. And those ones reach then, don't they? Yeah, true, I guess that works. All the soldering is good. So we just got to re-secure that coil down there. So do you want to put it back together again? Okay. That's yeah, about in the middle. That's 
tight enough. And then coming out in a hurry, that's for certain. Okay, turn this thing all the way. And put that there and that there, like that. So that should go all the way around to there, and that should go all the way around to there. Good. Okay, what we can do, we've only got to glue that one. Do you want to remount these speakers and then we'll hop we'll glue that bit in. Shall I put the next one in? There we go. Soldering's all good on that. Thank you. Do you want to start dismantling that one? What we've got here is this coil is pretty much falling off the board. Um, if that comes loose then it will obviously rattle around, it could break the connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hot milk glue underneath it just to secure it. Simple as that. So all the other components are tight, all the cabling, all the connections are good. So put the builder bear stuff back in. And I'll box this one up. And have a look in the other one. Okay, the cone has got a little bit knocked in the middle, so carefully press underneath. Be able to drive that out very slowly. That's it. So now you can sort that problem out. Okay. Okay, that's one done. Put that to one side. Okay, second speaker now. Nice and gentle, really like. So that's that. Let's check. Oh, this, this coil I think has just completely come off. Oh, it has, hasn't it? Okay, so I've opened it up and there, this coil is already loose. Other than that, it all looks good. Um, yeah, so that might need gluing again, and these definitely need cleaning. Okay, so this coil has come away completely. So we'll put some hot milk glue underneath it and secure it to the board again. That's cooled off a little bit. Pressing it down. Okay, jobs are good. And does everything written on the back of it as in a value? Um, Cat 44H 4 ohm 820B Japan. 4 ohm, there you go, so it's basically what we measured, wasn't it? The 4 ohm. There we go. So, yeah, so we've learned a lot about them. So let's, I'll let you connect it all up to the uh, Hi-Fi system. Then. Let's go. Okay, we've connected the speakers up now to the amplifier and the turntable. And we've checked them again to make sure they're still functioning well. The potentiometers now, when you adjust these ones for the medium and the high frequencies, uh, they work, there's no crackle now. And we've also so had a look inside and remounted those uh, coils that have come loose. So hopefully these speakers will keep you going for the next 30, 40 years. Yeah. Um, sound very good, I'm very pleased with it. So that's 
So thank you for watching. Hope you found this of interest and maybe a little bit useful. See you next time. Yeah.